after like two notes. Okay, come on, Zoe, you've got to get one back. Here we go, ready? Next tune. <laughs> oh! From one oh, note. On. That is good knowledge. <laughs> fair play to you. Yes, it is Doctor Who. And uh, fair play, you got that very quickly as well. I'm sure you did at home as well. Uh, but um, have you ever wondered uh, who makes the music? Who makes these TV classic musicals? Uh, music. Well, uh, we sent Connie behind the scenes to meet up with Murray Gold, who's in charge of the Doctor Who music. To make music, do you have to be able to read music or play an instrument? No, of course you don't. I mean, anybody at all can contribute to music. To write a song, mm. you don't need to be able to play an instrument. You don't need to be able to read or write music. So how did you actually get into music? I used to go around to visit my grandma and she had a piano. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't keep my hands off of it. <laughs> so when did you actually compose your first piece? The funny thing is, Blue Peter played a really important part in all that. Really? <laughs> well, I was about ten years old and there was a brilliant bit where Mike Oldfield was on it, who wrote all the music for Tubular Bells and Simon Groom. So, the next stage, presumably the first instrument. And Mike Oldfield sat there and performed the Blue Peter theme, uh, one instrument after another. First he played the guitar, and then he played the bass, and then, and then he played the boran, which is an Irish percussion instrument, and then he played the tune on the little synthesizer. He played it at half speed and then sped it up. And it was the same man playing every piece. It was a fantastic eye-opener, you know? It's one of those moments where you, th where, where you suddenly go ding, and you think, oh, wow, I wonder... I wonder if I could spend some time doing that. That would be fun. Wow, that's <laughs> great. And so then, like, something like adapting the Doctor Who theme tune, is yeah. that harder than making your own? Or well, how does it It is, in a way, because the Doctor Who theme tune is uh, the, the best TV theme music ever made. Certainly the most experimental. Yeah. And the old Doctor Who theme was made by a lady called Delia Derbyshire, 1963. Wow. And that didn't have any instruments in it at all. It just had electronic testing equipment. She recorded the noises that it made, and every single note was individually recorded onto tape. So when you go dum da dum dum da dum dum da dum, each dum was recorded separately, and then it was all sellotaped together. No, that's so laborious. Oh, they took months of overdoing it. So, do you write all the incidental music on the show as well? I do actually. I write all the music for. You're all... a hard worker, aren't you? <laughs> well, it, it, there is there is a lot of it as yeah, well. Yeah, that's so, true. But I get um, I get a couple. Of, these come through the post. Uh, Look at wow, them. are these copies of Doctor Who that have never been seen before? Episode 1, version 12, lock, locked. That means they can't change it anymore. For the Christmas special, yeah. the, the Doctor was in his wardrobe room in the TARDIS, choosing a new costume, and you think, oh, this is a great moment, he's going to choose his suit, this is the Tenth Doctor, here he comes. And it just needed a big song. And it was Sunday night, and I, I rang up a friend of mine who's a, a young singer, and I said, um, listen, I've, I've got this song. It's got to be recorded and mixed this evening. Uh, I just finished the lyrics. Do you fancy coming round and singing it? Probably 10 million people will see it. So, uh, He was what like, do you think? I'll cancel my plans. <laughs> yeah, he came round. So, incidental music can basically change the whole mood of something, can't it? You have the power to do that. Is that right? Well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Okay. <laughs>